All right, hey guys. Um, I wanted this just to be a one-part bass episode, but lucky me, my camera died halfway through. So this is the second part of the bass episode. Uh, it was meant to be a five-part series, but I guess now it's a six-part series. Sorry about that. Um, this is the second half. I'm midway through explaining my bass lures, so this is, again, like I said, part of a six-part video series. Um, they're all going to be in the playlist. It's basically how you use lures, what different types of lures I'd recommend. I'm going through all my lures of different types of fish. Um, how to rig up one of these suckers and all the vital equipment that you're going to need for lure fishing. Alright. So, uh, I'd recommend watching all the videos. The first one is basically an intro to this. What you need, what you don't need type of deal. Um, then the second one is panfish. My favorite panfish lures, because believe it or not, the big panfish, them are caught on. Them are sometimes caught on worms, but you, you get pretty lucky, but the big ones are caught on lures, I'm just going to be honest. And after that, I did the first half of the bass episode. I hope this one happened, but looks like it did. So, um... This is the second half. I tried to set everything up basically the same. And I'm just going to pick up right where I left off. I don't know if I already said this, but I'm going to link the rest of the playlist up here in this card. And then I will include all the links that I said I would include in the description in the first video and the second video combined together in the first video's description as well as the second video's description. So I don't know if that makes sense, but basically all the dis all the links that I said I would include in either one of the bass episodes will be available on both bass episodes. Because I'd recommend checking them out, you know. These are some top-notch brands that I've they're tried and true tested. Um you can ask any old timer. They'll all tell you that these are all good brands. All right? So I'm just going to pick up where I left off. Not much else to it. Last last thing though before I get started. I know I'm being annoying. Trust me. I know. I watch YouTube videos. I'm a kid too. You know I watch YouTube videos. I know. Um, I'm going to link right now. I'm going to put up another card right now. Right here. And it's going to be a link to the first bass video. Because if you do not feel like going through and watching my playlist, which I would highly, highly, highly recommend, then I would at least watch the bass video. At the very least, watch the bass video. Otherwise, you're going to miss all this fabulous lurery. All this fabulous lurery. Anyway, I'm, I'll stop being cheesy. No, I'm, I promise, I promise. Alright. Anyway, I was talking about this lure last. Basically, good. by maps. Moving on. Um, that basically, oh, no, one last thing. I do carry these with me. Now, some will tell you that these are for northerners. They're right. Some will tell you these are for walleye. They're also right. But, I knew a guy one time, my grandpa, who believed in these lures so much. It was unbelievable, this guy. He sweared by these things. He would not give up no matter how much I told him to. And one day we were out fishing. And he caught the biggest ass bass I think I've ever seen. Excuse my language. I don't know if I can figure out how to bleep it out. But if I can, I will bleep that out. After all, this is a family channel. Um, he caught a 22 inch bass on this. 22 inch bass. 22 inch. 12 pound bass. That's a big bass. And so ever since that day, I include them when I tell people about lure fishing bass. Every time. Every single time, I'm telling you. Good. You may be a believer, by the way, if you can't tell by my aestheticsness. Okay, so I finished this box right here, 
on the side. I finished this box. Now onto this box because they fall down as you just saw. All right. Here's the next box. Wait, let me get her into camera view for you real quick. Okay. Here is the next box of lures. Okay. So we're going to start over here. These, I might have two different variations of them. This one's obviously in better shape than this one. This one's missing an eyeball. A little bit fatter, a little bit clunkier, a little bit more uh, odd. I don't know. I don't really like it, but I carry it in case I were to ever lose this one because this is such a good type of lure that if I were to ever lose this one while I was on a bass fishing trip, I'd want to have a backup version of this lure. That's how good it is. This is definitely a small time tackle box lure. Uh, this is meant to interpret a frog swimming and it will dive but it will stay basically at the top and it will swim like this. Very well. It's a nice little slight rattle. By the way, if you guys are wondering how I'm telling if they're rattling or not, so you may be saying that's just the hooks. Well, here's how you do it, okay? So you just got to be careful. You hold your lure up like this. You grab the hook. And you do the same thing with these two fingers down here. You grab the hook and you hold it. And then you shake it to make sure it's not just the hooks. Alright? That lure cannot stress enough. I do not know what brand it is by. Let me just check real super quick. by Rebel, so I will link them, well, I will link a picture of this frog in the description, I'll scour the internet and find a link to this, to where you can buy this frog, because this frog is freaking awesome, alright, on to the next one, sorry, get a little bit overexcited, alright, on to the next one, okay, so I guess I just gotta address this, real super quick, these two, these two, um, this one was actually hand painted quite a years ago by a guy I knew. He hand painted this one for me. Beautiful, beautiful lure, one of a kind. You can't really buy this one. You can buy knock, you can buy, um, not knockoff version, but similar versions of it. It's metal. Very, very beautiful. You can buy similar versions of it. I bought this, like, um, the, the base lure itself is a Rapala, and then the guy painted it for me. This beautiful, um, this beautiful color. But the base lure is a Rapala, so I bet you, actually, now thinking back on it, I just ate my words. But now thinking back on it, I bet you you can buy the base Rapala of this. I don't know if you still can or not. If I haven't said it enough, Rapala is awesome. Buy Rapala. That's a classic. But you know what? You will pay up for it. That's all I'm going to say. Here's a classic example of it. Now, this base lure cost me about 10 bucks. And I've caught nice bass, I've caught bass on that. Not always big, mainly small mouth, a little bit smaller small mouth, about 14, 13 inch max, you know. But it's nice if you're just fishing, you want a little bit of quick action, throw that in. And who knows, I've actually caught a monster crappie on that one too. Now here's a knockoff version of that lure. Here's a knockoff version of that repile lure. What's the exact same? Now, this lure... Does not look nearly as nice as the base lure did. Or this lure, definitely not that lure. Um, you can see it's kind of cheap. It's already scratched up all over on the stomach and stuff from a couple bites by a bass. I'm telling you, by a bass. I mean, but as you can tell, it's not made with the same quality. Like, see the lips smaller, but it was a lot cheaper. It was about two bucks. So it was a lot cheaper, but. I got what I paid for with the Rapala. So you gotta balance that out, you know? Sometimes the Rapalas are ungodly expensive, but a lot of times they're worth it. But you know what, if you don't feel like spending that money, get a knockoff version, because a knockoff version is better than not having one. All right, on to the next one. On to the next set of lures. I have a lot of these lures double stacked because, let's be honest, I wanted a bigger tackle box, but I collect too many lures. 
Anyway, I should probably have two tackle boxes, but I try. I'm gonna try and avoid that for as long as possible. Okay, so here is basically a very very early um, perch lure. This was my um, grandfather's. Well, unfortunately, passed away, and um, I got a few of his lures. Um, you won't be able to find this in the stores nowadays. I'm just gonna say it works very well. Um, if you are fortunate enough to pick one up at a rummage sale or an estate sale, please do not pass up the opportunity. Because look how beat and broken this lure is. Look how beat it is. I mean, look at the stomach. You can literally see inside the lure. Well, you can't see it on the camera. You can literally see inside the lure. That's how beat up it is. But it produces for me every single year. And um, if you have a chance to buy it, buy it. All right, I'll shut up and keep explaining. I have to go fast now. Okay, so now here's a type of lure that they do not sell anymore. I was fortunate enough to buy this one off a gentleman um, that I met fishing. Um, very, very good lure. Um, well, actually, it wasn't a gentleman met, I met fishing. A gentleman who was uh, selling some used lures at a bait shop of his. And it's called a Lazy Ike. Now... They do make knockoff versions of this, but they don't work nearly as good as the original Lazy Ike. They don't work nearly close, nearly good. They stopped making the OG Lazy Ike. This is an OG Lazy Ike. Um, I want as close to an OG as I can find. It is an OG, actually, I'm pretty sure. It was painted this beautiful color. Um, I feel it's kind of like murder because, well, I mean, it is a beautiful color, but it's not the original color. And the original color was probably so, so much better. It probably was like brown or something. But, you know what? It's better than nothing. And this one's a little bit too heavy. So it dives pretty fast. But, again. I don't make them anymore. But if you have the blessing of running into a Lazy Ike. Please buy it. An original Lazy Ike. An actual Lazy Ike. Please buy it. And put it in your tackle box. And cherish that sucker because it is amazing. That will be a small box taco box lure if you can find it. Alright. So here's the next variation of lure that I have. I have three of them. One of them was crappily hand painted by me when I was little. Don't judge. Please. 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 Then I have the hula popper right here. A little bit older but still deliveries. Deliveries every year. Every year I think it won't. Every year it does. And then I got this one by Rapala. Um, these are called bass poppers, all right? All three that I just showed you are called bass poppers. Okay? And they're called this because see this little mouth right there? See that little... Ooh, shoot. Ah, sorry about that, folks. See this little mouth right here? See how it goes in instead of down like most Rapalas do? Now that's on purpose because this lure... It is a special type of lure, you gotta know how to use it. And you use it at night when there's flies jumping on the water. You can see them when you're seeing flies jumping all around you. You pop this baby on your lure, on your line, and you just raise your tip a little bit. Just tink, tink, just tink, tink, tink. And this guy will go blop, 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 like a little bait fish eating the flies. Now that will get up. That will hit the predatorial instinct of the bass very hard and will get you a nice bass. But you gotta know how to use them. So at the end of this segment, actually, uh, I'm thinking this one might actually be a three part segment, this bass part of it, because, ugh, um, because I actually switched to my other camera. That I uh, that I um that I own two cameras. I actually switched to the other camera that I own. Ooh, one second, got a problem with my tripod. I actually had switched to the other camera that I owned, and um, this one's about to die too. So, um, I guess it'll be part three. But I'm gonna keep explaining until that happens. And at the end of all this, I'm going to show you with my lure pole that I have laid out right there how to do the blooping for the, I just like to call it blooping because it's fun to say, for the bass popper. 
Okay, so next up is this. It's a crayfish type lure. The small one, again, I talked about. This small one, I talked about in the, um, oh shoot, one second. This small one I talked about in the, the, the small one down there, I talked about in the, um, panfish episode, last episode. But here's what the bigger version looks like. I use it for bass fishing all the time. Uh, it has a little tail in the back, so it even swims backwards like a crayfish. It has this yellow and orange underbelly to make it look very, very sickly. This is different than most sickly looking ones, because it has a little bit of a yellow underbelly. I actually own two of them. One doesn't look quite as sickly. But I've caught thousands of bass on this this type of lure. Um, it's tried and true. Classic. Um, this is definitely a small time, a small um, a small tackle on sewer. This one's also made by Rebel. Rebel makes some pretty good um, bass lures. Let me just double check that it actually says Rebel. Just give me one second. Yes, it is Rebel. Just making sure. I don't want to give you guys false information. Okay, now I'm almost out of bass lures in this one, but here's a quick one, real quick. It's actually the rubber worm. Now, there's all different variations of it. Like, right here, I have a leech. It's supposed to be a leech. But right here, um, is this is the most common one. It's uh, like a night crawler like this. Rigged up all different ways with one of these, a jig head. Um, generally a little bit larger jig head. Um, I have all different shapes and sizes. And With them, you want to have quite a mess of them, like I do right here. I have quite a mess of them. And quite a mess of uh, jigs right there and uh, quite a mess of them because because you want to be able to keep changing keep changing until you get something that works all right so that is it for that I want to say episode but that is it for that box on the next box this next one will be a quickie this next one is my spoon box um, this in this in this box per se I'm going to just show you a few quick spoons that I like, a um, few quick classics. Not going to go over it too much, basically. The spoons, you got to keep trying them until you find ones that work for you. But here's a little bit of a jumping off point for you, a little bit of work that I've done. Okay, so Daredevil. The one I'm holding right now, it's called Daredevil. That is a tried and true classic. I have multiple, multiple slides. I actually, I actually talked about the smaller version of that in the other one. And I'm going to link this, Daredevil, and all the other um, ones that I say are tried and true in this. So pay attention. I'm going to link this little Cleo down in this. I'm going to link little Cleo down in the description. As well as, um, as well as Meps. Meps, they make a number. The number two spoon is very good for bass. And then, like, I just have all kinds of, like, random ones. Like this one. Like this one. I don't even know where I got that one. It's just nice. It's just good. But, I mean, look how many I have here. That doesn't look like a lot, but that's a lot of spoons. And that is a lot of years of practice. And I used to have a lot more. But this is the ones that work. Um, little Cleo. They are they are probably one of my favorite spoon brands, followed up by then Daredevil. Then after that, Maps. I'm going to link all three of them down in the description. All right. Um, I would definitely have some spoons in your small time tackle box um, I'd probably have a daredevil a little clear